Okay, hi everybody. So uh, my name is Ray, and today we're actually going to talk to Dr. Ray Buntine, who's uh, the head of the machine learning group at Monash and uh, does a lot of good data science work. So, um, hi uh, Ray, how are hi. you doing? Good. Good. Okay. Well, um, just for the so the audience knows a little bit more about you, uh, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yes. Yeah, so I did a an undergraduate degree in math. Uh, loved it. Uh, didn't like the jobs I was getting offered. So I ended up getting a, a programming job, which I absolutely loved. So I converted across, I did a, a, a master's in computing, similar to what they do here at MIT. And then I uh, went into a PhD using my math skills and immediately fell into machine learning. And I loved machine learning. And machine learning back then was the computer science attempt in the 80s to do data science. So wow. we didn't take off in the same way, but we were moving there, you know. So, so that was it. And then uh, I got a, a good job in a US postdoc and, and things, things took off there. Um, which company did you work with? Um, so uh, I got a postdoc at, at NASA uh, and I worked there for about five years. Through my Monash contacts, interestingly enough, got me the the uh, job in, in, in NASA originally. Um, and then I went into startups and did uh, startups and uh, uh, worked for Google for a bit, um, uh, Berkeley, UC Berkeley. I did some lecturing actually at Stanford and Berkeley. I'm basically filling in. So when the AI, fa there weren't many AI faculty at the time and, and they'd go off for a sabbatical and they'd ask us to come in and do the lectures for them. So that was a lot of fun. So I've got a very a lot of very famous students out there now who are my ex Stanford. Sounds like a folks, very yeah. good network to have. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, we are actually quite a bit. Uh, we are interested in, in smart cities, right? Mm. So I am curious to know what are your thoughts on how data science or AI um, is being is relevant <clears throat> to smart cities. So cities. That's where most people live these days. They're massive, and people are trying to make them work in a better way. And what is a city? It's food, transport, uh, power, education, health. It's all of those things. So smart cities is about trying to apply smarts to the old style uh, sort of low tech stuff, marry it and make it work better. Um, and, and that's the whole idea. And every aspect of, of a city is, is getting worked on. You know, whether it be rebuilding the power system or um, trying to improve the health system. Right. And it's all runs around, revolves around collecting uh, data. Ah, yeah, yeah. So sensors are everywhere. And, and so the whole thing is integrating massive sensors, then doing all sorts of processing, but then you've got to act on it. So you have to change the way you're, you're running the city. Um, and power is a good example there where in the power system, in the old way, the power is just piped in and, and everyone draws from it. Right. But the way it'll change is you'll have a smart fridge that's going to say, hey, um, I want some power now. I could save it and store it somewhere. And, and then when the price is higher, I don't need any. So the, the smart devices will communicate with their smart meters and try and get the power at a time when it's cheaper for them. Um, so the whole way of, of power systems working together will be changing. That'll be right. a, sl a slow change. Okay. Um, sounds like a lot of opportunities that are just going to come oh. out of cities changing. Yes, absolutely. Right. And everywhere is different. You know, health, uh, transport, everywhere has got their low-tech, high-tech combinations that are really, really integrating. And how to make it work. Mm. Um, okay. so. Uh, you've done a lot of interesting things. So could you sh share one interesting project that you have worked on? So I, I guess the one that sounds the best would be, right. I've done some really fun research stuff, but, but the, uh, maybe it's when I was at NASA, we were doing uh, high resolution spectroscopy um, of the space shuttle main engine. And the idea is if a hydrogen burning motor is outputting metal, maybe there's a problem because it, all it's supposed to output is water. You know, it burns hydrogen and combines it with oxygen and there's water coming out. So why is there metal? So, so we had at the time the highest resolution uh, 
spectroscopy there was. Um, now you can do it much better. But uh, um, and we'd analyze the the metal coming out, and we'd try and estimate what sort of metal was causing that. Um, so that went for a while, and so I'd go out to um, uh, the Marshall Space Center in Birmingham, where we'd watch the test firings of the shuttle, and then we. We'd have these fancy instruments and then we'd do all sorts of analysis. It was a lot of fun. Um, but unfortunately the space shuttle main engines were kind of uh, shut down about, they, they stopped the development on them sometime afterwards. So we never got to field that, uh, that particular idea. But, but right. it, was, it, was, it was very interesting and really leading edge. And yeah, and it sounds like you're using data science and all of this. Absolutely, well. really right. introduced me to the power of instrumentation. Yeah, and, and this was 20 years ago, right? Uh, maybe 30 years ago, uh, 80, 80, 95. Oh, wow. So we have a data science guru here with this, just so you know. Okay, so for the next question, um, so for students, and uh, I would probably focus on the um, pre university students right like what sort of coursework do you think that they should be focused on to get involved with the smart city so um, i've tech. uh very um very strongly i think first off you've got to have your general science because it's all going to be science of some kind um you've got to do math now that doesn't mean you have to be good at math or you have to be wanting to be an engineer but you've got to get the math done at the high school level you know uh, so you've got to have enough of it so you can cope with the bits of math that will come on because whatever it is there's going to be some some related stuff um, so uh, and the other thing is and I, I'm not sure the 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 Australian systems figured this out yet is is programming um, and right now I'm not really sure I haven't studied the, the best way for a student to learn programming, but you're going to have to learn programming. And the sooner you learn it, you know, the better off you are, because really it's not that complex. Really, if, if you're a, 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 a smartish, you don't have to be Brilliant. top 1%. Top right. If you're top 20%, you can be a great programmer. But and the younger you learn, the better. And it's not that complex. It really isn't. So you just need the right kind of... Um, educational tools. Right, yeah. so ultimately it's, it's a combination of math and um, basic programming yeah. skills. Very basic, but yeah. start getting um, used to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, how do you think um, students who are interested in, in smart cities and they understand its impact on the future, how do you think they, should, they could get exposed to IoT or smart city technology? So we, we, did, we did talk about this beforehand and, and uh, what the community has been building is the, the Raspberry Pi and these little IoT devices. The idea is you don't want this big laptop. That's not the thing that's going to be out there collecting data. It's going to be a little micro device that is going to be a self-contained computer. In fact, they are a self-contained computer. And, you know, hackers go in and, and hack the video, the, the video cams on a, on a street side and, and make it do stuff. They can actually turn it into a... Uh, an email spammer virtually if right. they wanted to so um, but you want to learn to play with these little things and, and we're getting all these sensors now as well so there's actually a lot you can do and most of the computing world has put their cool technology down onto these little little devices now you've got a little thing this big that's a complete computer right. and you know you just plug in it might have three little USB ports on it you just plug in your keyboard and you, that's it, you've got a full computer there. They're, they're amazing. And all the good operating systems and a lot of the good software there. Um, and they're very well uh, integrated. They're, they're, it, they've got to be, they're edge computing devices, which means they've got to be good at simple processing and then passing some results and some sensor data back to the, the main system. That's what it's all right. about. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, I think smart cities, a lot of the um, functions revolve around collecting data from sensors. Absolutely, so yeah, yeah. That would be a good yeah. place to start. Um, so are there any um, smart city initiatives by Monash is getting involved so, with? Or? So, well, the big thing actually is Monash is starting what's called the Data Futures Institute, which is 
um, it, it's sort of an umbrella organization that's going to be steering data science, artificial intelligence as a group at Monash. And one of their main areas is sustainability, which overlaps well with smart cities, of course. But you've got, uh, oh, you know, the architectural folks, the, the medical folks. So in medicine, one of their big things is to support the, the home, uh, home health, right? So a great thing to do, it, good for everyone, is once you've had your life-saving operation or whatever it is, and they've got you stable, they need to get you home where you can be with your cat, you know, in your garden, pottering around. That's how you get healthy. So they want to send you home and what do you do send you you have some smart devices you you've got a tablet and you can talk to the the nursing staff so that kind of uh, uh, health initiative is big at monash um, but there's health there's architecture there's there's the art folks building great new devices um, and there's the data science folks themselves uh, and the security folks of course the blockchain right and right. cyber security is massive for, for smart cities, really critical. So when does this Data Futures um, Institute like um, kick off? Uh, God, I hope I haven't jumped the gun, but it was just, it's just been approved. So like maybe another year? Yeah, yeah, could yeah, it okay. should start. Like yeah. 2020 or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, that's something to <coughs> pay attention mm. to. Um, so yes, you did mention the, the blockchain tech and that, that alludes to the next question. So do you think there's an uh, intersection that will help between um, blockchain tech, um, artificial intelligence, data science, yeah. and IoT? Or? So, uh, uh, what do you call it? Digital. Um, so, blockchain is, is... A distributed ledger tech. Distributed ledger, yeah. So, think of a, um, a, a, a chain of evidence. You know, the, the, the police, when they're investigating something, they like to secure this chain of evidence and know where this item has been. So blockchain is where you can verify each step of the way. Um, and the best application I can think of is trying to avoid fake, deep fakes in videos or, or photos. So the idea would be that when the video or the photo is originally taken on the phone or the camera, it's got a digital signature attached to it. And thereafter, at every step of the way, every change that is made, it's done in a blockchain. And, and the the updates are authorized and, and kept and and the whole thing is reproducible by others as is uh, some of the blockchain um, technology goes so but that's going to happen with everything and it's going to take the world a way to catch up so some legal processes some government process and people are talking about having um uh, you, you know the the many steps of government where you're trying to get approval for something that saying maybe we can put those approval steps into, into blockchain. Uh, conveyancing in, um, in real estate is a, would be a good application of blockchain. So there's just many, many, many where it is. And it's all about establishing chain of evidence. Right. Why is that so important? Security, you know. And it, they're even talking about it in, in medical records. You wanna know that your medical records isn't being tailored, you know, tampered with. Um, in fact, it'd be a good way to, to, to kill someone, in the, murder someone in the future is tamper with their medical records and have them given the wrong treatment. The wrong dosage yeah, and yeah. things like that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that's, you can see why blockchain is, it would apply to many aspects of, of, of modern life, legal, right. legal health, government. Uh, so many. industries aside from what you're saying, if I understand correctly, you're saying that it has a security <coughs> element that's really strong. Um, about it and so it will be influenced data science AI and IOT yeah it'll be it'll become a part of, of many uh, sort of organizational uh, administration okay. processes yeah right. but these things take a while you like know 10 you, years yeah yeah think of uh, you know uber and taxis right the the uber is directly conflicting with the taxi business and, and there's, that's the old tech and the new tech of the, the Uber. And, and how does that change? And, how do you and, transition? Yeah, yeah, how do you transition? Right. And, you know, these things can't come in slowly. Can't come in quickly. It's, it's got to be. Um, right. And so for someone who's, who's um, new to this whole um, area of tech, um, mm. it's, a, it's good to get involved because it's, it's 
being worked on as we speak. So. It is, yeah, right. yeah. So, you know, an example is in, in data science and medicine. You know, you, the, the big professors, the guys with the suits and the gray hair who are head of the um, hospitals, they're not familiar with data science, but the new guys coming up, they're 30, uh, they're, they're, they're young, they're all getting into it and having, you know, reading groups and sessions and they're really understanding this stuff. So um, th those young people coming through, they're, they're going to be bringing that technology and trying to make better use of it. Right. And it's a, it'll be the same with law and uh, government administration and everything. Yeah, it'll, right. these things gradually come in. So there's just... Um, Banking, same thing. Yeah, that's actually happening in a big way right now. Yeah. This paradigm shift is actually going to provide a lot of opportunity for young people to uh, to shine. Yeah. If that's yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the sort of the handover of uh, <laughs> things. Of, uh, yeah, uh, it's interesting. Okay, and um, so we're talking about uh, artificial intelligence quite a bit. So, do you think? Uh, do you have any opinion on safety issues around it? Um, well, well, I'm no expert here, but but. It is the case that there are huge potential for problems, of course. Um, uh, there's many new and innovative ways of, of causing damage, you know, uh, of all kinds, causing disruption. Uh, the, the Americans talk about um, uh, disrupting power supplies, um, for, you know, a city's power supply, for instance. But uh, um, so, but. Uh, the big issue I see here is the multidisciplinary nature of it. You know, so we as the artificial intelligence community, we don't fully understand the context where our, our new technology is going into. So we don't really properly situate it right. Whereas on the other side, the people in those groups, whether it be people in the, the social sciences who better understand the, the social context or the medical people, they don't fully understand the technology. So, so right now we're, we're all sort of blaming each other in some way, but it's not really, um, uh, it's really got to be multidisciplinary teams that fix this. And I'll, I'll give you an example of deep fakes. You know, people are saying, well, deep fakes are coming. We, we've seen it. That's where you, you know, you, you, you have a politician say things completely against what they believe. You, you generate that or, um, but the, you see, deep fakes we can help fix with say, uh, uh, all sorts of ways of doing it. You know, there's, um, we've already talked about blockchain, that giving you a chain of evidence, that's one way of helping to overcome it. Um, uh, but there's all sorts of other ways. But it's got to be a combined technology and um, uh, sort of uh, uh, combined solution, you, you know. So it can't be it can't be something where lawyers come in and say, "Oh, deep fakes are illegal." That's not going to solve your problem. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's it's just better to have uh, dialogue groups or to absolutely to have, yeah. to have round tables yeah, to yeah. discuss yeah. these yeah. issues. So I see some naive things on on all sides, um, but you know we have to come together. That's a, and, and I'm sure the the Data Futures Institute will have an element of that about it. Um, and now we're on to the to the last question, um, Ray. Um, so, what do you have any idea what sort of job you could envision uh, coming out of all these uh, disruptions and innovation in tech? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, the nature of jobs is changing. You know. So, I mean, my my nephew is working uh, as a, he's helping build wind farms. You know, so he's wandering around Australia as an engineer doing that. But I imagine um, it's going to be this transition and you come in, you want to have a, uh, make sure you're, uh, the main thing is you have to be adaptable. You know, you have to be able to learn new things on the job and, and, and read and, and uh, pick up new things. But, but there'll be a, a transitions of jobs. In many areas, things can't change too quickly. Health, or right, or or power, or uh, in those areas, it's it's going to be a gradual change, and you have to come in with some different skills and, and be part of uh, changing that. But there are some big um, 
uh, changes, uh, you, you know, if you've got automatic driving, for instance, which we're not sure if that'll happen, but, but that's a, that would be a massive um, change in things. So, right, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, in, in the way jobs are done. Um, but I just imagine you're gonna, you're gonna have to, it, there will be constant change now as, as jobs evolve. Um, and we see that in the, uh, in say the um, uh, solar energy area where there's new things people have to do, installation. Um, so new things people are doing all the time. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I guess um, with, the, with this evolution in tech, as long as you can adapt and learn new things, um, you're going to keep getting jobs yeah, and yeah. there's nothing to worry but about. To, yeah. You know, to a degree, um, uh, uh, a plumber's still a plumber, you know, an electrician's still an electrician. So uh, there'll be new things they have to do. Um, uh, like a mechanic, you know, a mechanic now has a device that they plug into the car and it diagnostics. diagnostics yeah, right, yeah. right. So the the things they're using to do their job will change, but they'll still have a lot of the share, a lot of the old ideas because the, you know, water pipes are water pipes. They're, 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 that's not gonna that technology ain't gonna change. Right, right. <laughs> so we have a very positive outlook on things. Mm. Um, Dr. Ray Buntine, thanks for your time. All right. And um, we will see what you'll do next. Thanks. Okay, thank yep. you, bye. bye.